Hi, I'm Melissa, the Public Services Librarian at the Grant County Public Library. In the past, I hosted a book discussion group called Cook the Books, where we would check out cookbooks, take them home, read them, test out recipes, and then come back a month later and share the recipes and samples of the food and discuss the cookbooks and cooking techniques. So today I would like to share with you some of the information that I've obtained from our book discussion group in regards to what people consider to be good cookbooks and what makes a cookbook a good book. So obviously a good cookbook would have more than just good recipes. One of the things that we discussed a lot is the need for good photographs. And America's Test Kitchen puts out a lot of really good cookbooks. And they all have, if I can show you here, great illustrations. And in addition to the illustrations and good recipes, they provide information all about the different types of chocolates. It goes through the steps for melting chocolate. And each recipe has a great photo, step-by-step -step instructions. Now, sometimes Test Kitchen, their instructions, they can get a little involved, but generally all of their recipes work and they tell you how and why they do work. Another book that has great illustrations is The Food You Crave. Every recipe that I have tried in this book, the results, the end product actually looks like the photos in the book. So I know that I can trust this book. The photos have not been photoshopped. But not all cookbooks have to have excellent photos. One of my go-to cookbooks is The Joy of Cooking. Now this is one of the original version that came out and it is still my go-to cookbook. It does not have the beautiful photos, it's all black and white, but it is packed with information, with knowledge of cooking skills, different techniques, and what I keep bookmarked and what I refer to all the time is the equivalence and substitution. So if I'm making a recipe and I'm missing an ingredient, I look here to see if there's something that I can substitute for it and still be able to make the recipe. But in addition to having the equivalents the photos, the step-by-step -step instructions, a good cookbook needs to have a good story. It needs to provide some insight into the author, the author's life, maybe their travels. And a great example, I think where most people are familiar with Paula Dean, but that's part of the charm of her cookbooks is that they tell a story and we feel like we really get to know Paula. Every recipe has a paragraph where she talks about the person that inspired the recipe or that shared the recipe with her. And in addition to the photos of food, she includes photos of her family and friends. Ree Drummond, the pioneer woman, her cookbooks also give great insight into her family and life on a ranch. And another cookbook that I checked out, this one was from the Grant County Public Library, is the Irish Pub Cookbook. And in addition to the great photos of the food, it also includes photos of different regions of Ireland. So you kind of get a feel for what life is like in Ireland. So next time you pick up a cookbook, 
make sure you take time to read the paragraph before the recipe or the pages before the recipe and let the author take you on a journey. And you don't always just have to have a cookbook, a printed version. The Kentucky Libraries Unbound has a variety of really good cookbooks that are available in e-format. So take a look using the Overdrive app or the Libby app and see what cookbooks are available through the Kentucky Libraries Unbound and enjoy the journey. Goodbye.